And now a much needed update. The U.S. and Israel are nearing six months of genocide against Palestinians in Gaza, with over 32,000 reported fatalities, likely a severe undercount. Over 1.1 million Gazans are out of food. As recently as March, Israelis were driving to the Gaza border and blocking aid trucks from getting in, which is the number one worst reason to get in your car and drive 50 miles. If you're driving 50 miles, it better be for dick so crazy you can't even tell your friends about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, an Israeli rap song was released that tells Gazans they will blow up your house for free. A white rap song so evil it would be improved by adding a verse from Chet Hanks. <laughs> On Monday, the UN Security Council voted 14-0 for a temporary ceasefire, with the US abstaining instead of vetoing like they have in the past. It says a lot that the most progressive thing the Biden administration has done in months is literally abstinence only. <laughs> Whoa, what? Hold on. It's a, a message from the White House? <laughs> hey Ella, huge fans of the show. <laughs> We noticed that you're talking about Gaza. That's so gay of you or whatever. <laughs> the White House is working really hard. We've actually airdropped aid into Gaza. Yeah, aid via parachutes that are killing people and in trucks that the IDF are shooting at, killing hundreds of Palestinians in what's being called the flower massacres. The Biden administration thinks they can convince us that sending humanitarian aid to Gaza cancels out arming Israel. They're calling it the, that ad where Kendall Jenner gives a Pepsi to a cop strategy. <laughs> But bragging about aid while arming Israel is like a mechanic bragging about fixing your brake light while puncturing your tires and calling your mom a bitch. <laughs> Whoa, another message from the White House. The Kendall Jenner ad was actually really well received by Republicans. <laughs> Maybe try being bipartisan instead of just annoyingly bisexual, Ella. <laughs> Anyway, you wouldn't know about the flower massacres based on how the New York Times reported it. Quote, as hungry Gazans crowd an aid convoy, a crush of bodies, Israeli gunshots, and a deadly toll. The New York Times couldn't be more passive if they were Michael Sarah in a movie between 2007 and 2010. <laughs> Speaking of the New York crimes, pro-Palestine protesters have noted an uptick in police brutality. In the NYPD's defense, protesters block traffic, and cops need to run red lights while texting and driving in order to not punch their wives in the face. <laughs> Zionists love calling Palestine protesters Nazis, but if they were really Nazis, the NYPD would just leave them alone. <laughs> Direct actions have continued to escalate. In February, U.S. Air Force member Aaron Bushnell self-immolated outside the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. while chanting, Free Palestine. Queer indigenous playwright Victor Cazares is going on medical strike, foregoing HIV medication until the New York theater workshop calls for a ceasefire. What a low bar! Y'all belt dumb shit like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious all the time. I promise, Ceasefire Now has way less syllables. In the rando update bucket, former professional boxer Floyd Mayweather recently visited Israel to show support. He's pictured here wearing almost as many Stars of David as he has domestic abuse charges. Oh. Mayweather heard that Israel was using symbols of Judaism to cover up wrongdoing, and he took that literally. <laughs> The Intercept released an investigation about the questionable reporting process behind the Times' December 2023 story, Screams Without Words, which alleged Hamas deliberately used mass rape as a tool of war on October 7th. One of the co-writers of the Times' piece was an Israeli filmmaker with zero reporting experience, a fact the Times brushed over in their own self-conscious story this week. Israeli soldiers' video undercuts medics' account of sexual assault. The original article is still up with barely a correction, which makes sense when you consider that the Times' executive editor's Twitter banner photo is his own headshot. <laughs> this is not the face of someone who apologizes. This is the face of someone who hits roadkill for stress relief. <laughs> this is the face of someone who sits front row center at an AMC and laughs like this. Ha. Huh. <laughs> this is the face of someone whose dad co-founded Staples. That's, that's not even a joke. That's literally true. Can you imagine this bitch saying, ignoring war crimes, that was easy. <laughs> Despite the Times' propaganda campaign, even celebrities are escalating calls for a ceasefire. Eric Andre was at a protest with If Not Now. Hunter Schaefer was arrested while protesting with Jewish Voice for Peace. Boy Genius wore their artists for ceasefire pins at the Grammys. At the Oscars, Zone of Interest director Jonathan Glazer called out the Israeli occupation, which prompted a list of low-profile low losers to sign a letter denouncing his speech. What's going on? 
This one's from, oh, APAC, cool. <laughs> hey, hello, we're not losers. We actually uh, have a strong team of celebs. Michael Rappaport, Brett Gelman, Amy Schumer, and a bunch of background actors from shows you've never seen. <laughs> actually, speaking of randos, Ella, if you're interested, we think you'd be a great fit for the cause. Okay, I am looking for representation, but <laughs> you, I'm not a rando. <laughs> Celebrities aren't the only ones fed up. Democratic primary voters across the country are voting uncommitted, writing in Gaza, or leaving president blank, depending on the state, to pressure Joe Biden into changing course on Gaza. Finally, being uncommitted is actually helpful. <laughs> Hear that, random Bush Wakibe who keeps trying to guess my debit pin? You were made for this. No, random Bushwick situationship was made for voting for Joe Biden. <laughs> oh my. No one thinks this is genocide, by the way. Shut the f up. <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> ah! Anyway, that's not the only place that Biden is having trouble. At an event for Jared Kushner. Ah! Don't you dare mention Jonathan. ADF President Jonathan Greenblatt said, I really don't care how you vote. Biden's simping for Zion is so hard and, and they don't even give a shit about him. Mom? The IDF are at your house? They say if I keep talking, they're gonna put you in the next rap video about bombing hospitals? And feature Chet Hanks? Guys, I, I gotta take this. If you wanna help, we have links in the description to donate to GoFundMes for families trying to leave Gaza, ways to donate eSIMs for internet access, protest info, and more. We'll be right back. Hi, thanks so much for watching Late Stage Live with Ella Yerman. That's me, Ella Yerman. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, maybe even throw us a bone and share it around, or leave a comment down below if you're nasty. If you want to support our production needs and help us keep making indie, queer, leftist, late night comedy, you can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash latestagelive. That's patreon.com slash latestagelive. End of video.